and grow YouTube show. Remember in the 90s when all romantic comedies had the female romantic lead who was nerdy and wore glasses and the male romantic lead who never saw her until she took her glasses off and once she did, all of a sudden, he realized that she was beautiful and he'd been in love with her all along and they lived happily ever after. Remember when like every freaking movie had that plot, that plot set up in the 90s? Well, in the story, <laughs> in the story of my life, plants are the beautiful, smart, vibrant, multi-dimensional woman. I was too much of a knucklehead to notice. Once I started successfully caring for plants and learning uh, all about the joys of plant parenthood, I woke up to the sheer amazement that uh, plants are so wonderful and all around us. <laughs> this is so incredible. Hold please for the airplane. <laughs> My whole life, and I'll just speak to this, I won't read the book, but this was a very interesting it, this this concept is very interesting. You know, my whole life I was extremely disconnected with nature, and therefore I was also an epic plant killer. I couldn't keep a plant alive if someone paid me a million dollars. But I noticed that when I was living in New York City, I would walk down the street and I wouldn't notice the trees on my street. I wouldn't notice the plants in the restaurant that we were in. They were inanimate to me. And once I started caring for plants on this small level in my little tiny apartment, and I started having potted house plants uh processing that they were living things actually opened my eyes to the entire world around me and all of a sudden i started walking down the street and i started seeing the tree that was outside of my apartment for three years but i had just never seen it before and i saw the rogue morning glory that someone had planted that was climbing up the chain link fence to the dump that we actually lived across the street of um this concept is actually a, a scientific concept that that's been written about called plant blindness I prefer not to refer to it as plant blindness because I don't think it's a fair uh, comparison to those who actually struggle with blindness. So Veranda Montgomery, another botanist, has kind of renamed it plant bias. So I like to refer to it as plant bias. But there's this awakening that happens within us when we learn to care for plants, whether it's gardening, whether it's house plants. It's this awakening of seeing nature again and seeing plants in this new way. Um, and it's really magical. And we're lucky to have places like the Botanical Garden where we can come and see the plants on a much larger scale because many people here might be living in small apartments like I was and filling it with 100 pla uh, house plants was the only thing that I could do to, to connect with plants and, and, and reconnect with nature in that way that I was craving. Um, so obviously C is, is the most traditional sense that people might think but it's not just seeing, it's it's re-seeing, it's opening ourselves up to viewing the world as this connected, living, breathing thing, um, as the plants communicate with each other and as we are part of it, you know, we are nature, we are part of, we are living beings just like these trees and beautiful plants are. And the closer connected we can become to them, I think the kinder, the world will be, the, uh, the world will become kinder because of it. So for me, in terms of seeing, I've been influenced by a lot of remarkable teachers in my life and career. And one of the things that one of my science teachers all trained us to do was to learn how to train our eyes to truly see, to see a level of detail beyond that most people yeah. that would observe. And the way we did that was through drawing. Mm -hmm. And we would often sketch things because you wind up training your eye, but you also train your other senses in that you, if you have to replicate something exactly, you have to truly observe its shape, size, form, colors, textures. Uh, and for many of people who have asked me as a professional horticulturist, like what's your secret? Is it your education? Is it your soil, your fertilizer, your this or that? They all want to know what that magic trick is. And I've always believed that it's observation is the most important skill you can have. Whether it's an artist, a cook, a gardener, uh, any career is that by training yourself to see and truly observe, you learn the difference between too much water, too little water. You see the health of a color 
I can tell by looking at the shade of green of a plant, mm -hmm. whether it needs water or it's dry, whether it's healthy, whether it's diseased. And you learn as time goes on that the level of observation that we are taught is only a small part of the ability of our senses. Absolutely. And when you talk to people who have impairments in their senses, what happens? The other senses become hyper-developed to compensate. Mm -hmm. There's a balance that needs to happen. And you learn that what you've been taught is only the beginning of what you can learn to see. Mm -hmm. And so over time, as you learn from these great teachers who teach you uh, how to develop your powers of observation, how to truly see, understand, and interpret the world around you. Mm -hmm. Not only can you become great gardeners, great chefs, great artists, it really is one of the most core of our senses, but without the other, it's almost... <laughs>